Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky, sponsored by Squarespace. And it is July, which means it is the peak of Milky Way core season. We've got Milky Way core all night, and I'm sure you're all pretty stoked about that. I apologize in advance if this video is uploaded a little bit late. I'm super busy right now finishing my book, Photographing the Night Sky, which I've been working on for the past four and a half years. So it's so amazing to finally finish it. I'm super excited for you guys to see it. It's being printed in July. We'll be shipping in August and we'll be taking pre-orders very, very soon. So keep an eye out on my website, on my social media channels. If you really don't want to miss out, sign up to my mailing list and you'll be contacted as soon as pre-orders are ready. All pre-orders will be signed and if the first print run sells out, you might be waiting a while for the second print run because of the way the, uh, the global economy is going right now. There's a global paper shortage. So don't miss out on the first edition run. Sign up to my mailing list down below. But coming up this month, we have the planetary parade at the start of the month. And we don't have much time left, but you can still see all five of the naked eye visible planets. It is the peak of Milky Way core season. So we've got Milky Way core all night. Those in the high latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere will be keeping an eye out for the noctilucent clouds. There is a supermoon and there are also several meteor showers to know about as well. But before we deep dive into all of that and more, a quick message from the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to host your website or online store. And I would not be a full-time freelance photographer if I didn't have my Squarespace website. It's a place for me to show off my images so that people and clients and customers can see what I'm capable of. It's a way for them to find me via a search engine, which is much more powerful than social media. But it's also a place for me to make my own money by selling my own products. So I can sell my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets, which help you edit your images and develop a workflow. And it's where you'll very soon be able to pre-order my book, Photographing the Night Sky. So if you don't have a website, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Alan, start your free trial. You don't need to know any web design or graphic design. Squarespace is very easy and intuitive to use and you can start with one of their award-winning templates. Once you've customized that to how you want it and you want it to go live, use the code Alan at the checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with Squarespace. So starting with a general look at the Northern Hemisphere night sky. The planetary parade, which ended last month, continues into the start of this month. So you'll have all five of the naked eye visible planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, stretching from the eastern horizon high up into the south. But as each day goes by, Mercury drops closer and closer to the sun and becomes very difficult to spot. By July the 16th, it's already at superior conjunction, so banging line with the sun. So Mercury, very difficult planet to spot. You need a nice clear view of the horizon, so no mountains or anything in the distance, and you need real good clear weather for the whole direction. But either way, we still have a morning sky full of planets. As it's July, it's also the peak of Milky Way core season, so as darkness falls, the Milky Way core is already pretty high in the southeast, and then as the night goes on, it arches up into the south, where it reaches its highest point above the horizon. And as the night goes on, it continues to sink down into the southwest and then it starts getting light. So we've got the Milky Way core in the sky all night, which I'm sure you're all pretty pumped about. But don't forget to turn around and face northeast because there's another section of the Milky Way there which runs through the constellation Cassiopeia. You can spot Cassiopeia quite easily. There's a W or an M asterism of bright stars. There's a nice, it's pretty faint, but still pretty worth photographing region of the Milky Way running through Cassiopeia. And if you shoot it with a wide angle lens, just to the right of that strip of Milky Way, you'll find the spiral galaxy Andromeda M31. Um, so that will appear in your images as well. And it's just nice to have some north facing compositions and a little bit of a different approach to the Milky Way. For those of you in the Northern Hemisphere between latitudes 45 to 65 degrees north, you still have a real good chance this month of spotting the noctilucent clouds. So whilst it doesn't get that dark at this time of year in those regions of the world, you have an amazing opportunity to photograph these incredibly stunning, silvery, wavy clouds on the northern horizon. 
So they are the highest known clouds to exist at 85 kilometers in altitude, high up in the mesosphere, and they form over the polar regions. And once the sun sets, it illuminates these clouds from underneath, starting at about nautical twilight, and then they glow against the dark backdrop of twilight, and they're absolutely stunning. So I won't go into much more detail in this video because I talked about them last month, and I have an entire video on my channel about how to photograph noctilucent clouds, so do check that out if it's relevant to you. On to the Southern Hemisphere, where those of you on the southern tips of Australia, Tasmania, New Zealand will definitely be keeping an eye out for the southern lights over the southern horizon at this time of year. Facing south towards the circumpolar constellations, you'll see the large and small Magellanic Cloud just skirting along the horizon in the evening sky. So a really good opportunity uh, to get a nice almost telephoto shot of those with some sort of landscape foreground interest as well. And just to the right of those in the sort of in the west a little bit is a real beautiful region of the Milky Way. You've got the Crux constellation, the Carina constellation with the, the beautiful Carina nebula as well. It's just a real beautiful bright fuzzy region of the Milky Way. Lots of bright stars and nebulae. Just an absolute stunning region of the night sky now um, low in the southwest. The Milky Way core starts the night pretty high in the east. It goes high up overhead, up almost passes through the zenith if you're at sort of 25 degrees latitude. And then the Milky Way core begins to set into the west in the latter half of the night. And as it does that, you get an opportunity for a Milky Way arch panorama with the Milky Way core right at the apex of the arch. So if you're up in the early hours of the morning, real nice opportunity to get a Milky Way arch. I'm getting absolutely eaten alive by here. Oh God. And then of course you guys can also see the planetary parade at the start of the month. But because the ecliptic is angled so much steeper to the horizon in the Southern Hemisphere, the planets start in the east and go way up straight up overhead. So it's almost like a vertical stacking of planets. And as I mentioned earlier, as each day goes by at the start of the month, Mercury drops closer and closer to the sun. So we don't have much time left with all five of the naked eye visible planets visible in the sky at the same time. As for close approaches this month, on the 21st, a crescent moon joins Mars. And if you're in the Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia, you'll actually get to see a lunar occultation where the moon passes in front of Mars and blocks it from view quite briefly. Um, so if you happen to be in the Kamchatka Peninsula, make sure to check that out. And then on the 26th is when a real thin crescent moon joins Venus. And I love these photographs where you've just got a real thin crescent moon. Earthshine is illuminating the other portion of the moon so you can see the moon in its entirety. And then of course you've got the real bright Venus next to the moon as well. So don't miss out on that. Full moon this month is on the 13th and it is the buck moon to the Native American tribes because it's the time of year where the male deer start to regrow the antlers which they shed every year. And it's also a super moon so it will appear slightly larger and slightly brighter than usual but it, it is only slightly. Uh, the media likes to get carried away with super moons. You, you barely notice a difference but even still if it motivates you to get out and enjoy the full moon and I'm happy for it. As for these special events this month, there are several minor meteor showers active this month. They have their radiant points in Capricornus and Aquarius, so a region which favors Southern Hemisphere viewers. But the most prominent meteor shower this month will be the Southern Delta Aquarius, which is active from July the 12th to about August the 23rd. The peak is on July the 30th, where you can expect a maximum zenithal hourly rate of about 20 to 25 meteors per hour. And it's timed with a thin crescent moon. So viewing conditions are pretty favorable. And although it does favor Southern Hemisphere observers, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll have a hopefully good luck by facing South um, in your composition. So do check that out. It's always nice to uh, catch a few meteors in your images and then of course next month we've got the Perseids which will become active towards the end of this month as well so hopefully you all get some meteors in your images this month and that's all I've got for you guys so now on to the hashtag Wittens for those of you that are new here every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph and then upload your images to social media using the hashtag Wittens I then pick my favorite three for a prize 
Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins an Alan Wallace Constellation hoodie. And first place now wins my book photographing the night sky. I'm so excited. Last month's theme was the Planetary Parade. So without further ado, in third place was Nate Ross down in Byron Bay in New South Wales. This gorgeous morning twilight scene, pink morning colours, and the planets there stacking very high in the sky because the ecliptic is, of course, very steep in the southern hemisphere. And it's Nate's first time entering Witten, so let's not say it's beginner's luck because it's a really beautiful image. In second place was this stunning panorama from Thanos, and this is only half the panorama. You're going to have to go to his profile to check out the full panorama, but he's got all of the planets and the moon. Beautiful twilight scene with these boats on the coast, and uh, yeah, just really nicely processed, and just a beautiful overall image. But in first place was Rui with this incredible capture of not only all five planets, also the moon and the International Space Station almost cutting through all of the planets. I mean, that is a hell of a combo. So well done to Rui on that one. This month, I'm going to go for something a little bit unfair. Uh, so it's going to be Noctilus and Clouds. For those of you that are not within... Uh, the 45 to 65 degrees north of the equator, you guys can do the Milky Way core. Let's see how that goes. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of What's in the Night Sky. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.